Hello my friend, thank you so much for stopping by my channel and especially huge welcome if you're new. Congratulations on your pregnancy. This is a class focused on strengthening the pelvic floor area with a focus on women in the third trimester. I right now am 32, 33 weeks. Of course, you can practice this anytime throughout your pregnancy. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you showed your support and hit the like button and subscribed if you like the class at the end. And of course, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how pregnant you are and if you're expecting a boy or a girl, if you want to share. The only thing you will need for this class is a block or a book. So I have a yoga block right here, and if you don't have a block, just grab a thick, heavy book or a stack of books that would be about this high. All right, now if you have that block, I want you to put it between your inner thighs. If you don't have the block, you just have the books, that's okay, we'll put them to the side. We're gonna use the book stack later. If there is something you can squeeze between your inner thighs, do that as you stack shoulders over wrists and hips over knees. Good. So I just want you to squeeze in on the block. Feel the navel pull in. So it's like you're hugging your baby up into your spine. And from here, keeping that engagement, we'll come into an up cat, opening the chest, taking the shoulders back, and into a down cat to round, really pulling the navel up and in. So if you don't have the block at home, you're just doing traditional cat-cow, which always feels good, but try to hug the inner thighs together energetically. And of course, if you have the block, you're squeezing it like crazy. It's just helping us find a subtle pelvic floor activation. Inhale to arch. Exhale to round. Inhale to arch. And exhale to round. Good. If you have the block, place it now in between the calves and squeeze the block in between the calves. If you don't have the block, no big deal. Squeeze the block in between the calves, curl the toes under, regardless of whether you have the block or not, and just exhale, press into a downward facing dog. So if you have the block, I want you to think of the calves moving towards one another. So see the block, see the calves. You can always keep the knees bent or even super deeply bent. And then regardless of whether you have the block or not, look at your pinky toes and think of your pinky toes moving up in space. And from there, pull your pelvic floor up and in. I'm just gonna hold here five breaths. So you should feel both the outer and inner seam of the leg hugging in and up towards your pelvic floor. That space between your pubic bone and your sitting bones. And last breath. Good, come down, remove the block if you have it. We're gonna do some Kegel exercises, but in a puppy pose. So we're gonna open the shoulders at the same time. So walk the hands forward. You can always take the knees super wide here so you have space for baby. Let the forehead either rest to the ground and then lots of variations with the arms. You can take the hands to prayer. You can take the thumbs to the back of the neck if that feels good, like a nice stretch for the biceps. Or you can choose to just keep the arms wide, fingers spread, and just let the chest drop towards the floor. So it should feel like a really nice, juicy shoulder stretch. And the hips stay over the knees best you can. And good. Any variation with the arms here, just allow the forehead to really rest. And then as you breathe in, 
I want you to think of your pelvic floor opening like a clamshell to the back top of the room. And as you breathe out, close that clamshell, draw. It's almost like the tailbone wants to curl forward. And it's like you're slurping everything in. <laughs> so you feel the walls of the vagina and the pelvic floor completely close. So you're going to inhale. Allow the pelvic floor muscles to open and widen. And then exhale, slurp everything in. Just like the space between your legs was a straw and you wanted to hug everything into the body. You should feel the low abs contract as well. Inhale, let it relax. Kind of stick the booty up. It's like the sitting bones point towards the ceiling. And then exhale, low abs engage. Slurp that clamshell closed. Pull the navel and the pelvic floor up and in. So I've tried to describe this for you a couple different ways. Now do five more on your own. I find being in this puppy pose position really, really helps you find and fine tune this alignment. You'll really feel the pelvic floor when it can often be elusive. Low abs contract as you pull in. Good. And after you finish your last one, really contract the pelvic floor on that exhale. So feel the inner thighs squeeze together, low abs pull in, squeeze, 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 squeeze. It's like you had a hundred dollar bill <laughs> between your legs and you don't want to let it go. Good. And then press yourself back up to all fours. Let's open the hips now, keeping in mind this pelvic floor area that should, should just feel warmer now. Hopefully you have a sensation of what this area of the body is and what we're talking about. And if you don't, don't worry, because it takes a long time to feel and sense. This isn't a, an area of the body that we work with on a daily basis or even talk about, even in a lot of pre, prenatal yoga classes. So let's start with the left knee. Hold your baby up and in, so zipper the abs in. Feel the pelvic floor muscles engage, right? We just work them so they're slurping up and in. And then take the left knee directly out to the side, sort of like you were a dog who wanted to pee on a fire hydrant. That's the best analogy I can give. And then resist that knee as it lowers. Good, so left knee rises out wide and resist to lower. Good, you can come up onto your fingertips if you want a little more space. We'll do three more. The whole time you're doing this mindful of this pelvic floor area and each time you lower the knees to touch one another, you get to give it a little bit of an extra squeeze. So we're resisting to lift and resisting to lower. Let's do one more, resist to lift, resist to lower. And now resist to lift, and we'll make it a little more fun here. I want you to kick your leg back as if you're trying to get it over a high fence behind you. And you can draw the knee in towards the nose, and now you just get to make giant hip circles. <laughs> so this should just feel good. So knee to nose, knee to armpit, knee to that dog fire hydrant, and then up and back behind you. Let's do three more. Good, and then sink back into a child's pose. Or you can take that puppy pose again if child's pose doesn't feel so good for you. And just rest. So just take five breaths. Let the hips open, maybe wiggle the hips side to side. 
Splay the knees even wider if baby needs more room. And you can always lift the seat up in the air to that first position, that puppy pose position if that feels better for you. Last two breaths. Good. Come on back to all fours. This time working with the right knee. So first, abs engage, baby hugs in. Always want to think about this in your just daily stance, that you're hugging baby into your body. And then squeeze the inner thighs energetically towards one another. Feel the pelvic floor turn on. And then keeping all that engagement so you're really stabilizing the pelvis. You're going to take the left knee directly out wide to the left and then slowly clamshell it back down. Good. So it's like the inner thighs are squeezing together even as you lift and then squeezing together creating resistance even as you lower. Let's do this three more times. and then take the knee up to the side. And this is where you'll straighten the leg behind you like you're kicking it over a fence. And then draw knee to nose, knee to right armpit, and back to that fire hydrant position. Kick it up over a fence behind you. Huge feel-good circles now with the hips. Ooh. And do two more. Nice. Last one. Good. And now come back into either child's pose or down dog or that puppy pose. So puppy pose is where we were before like this. Down dog or child. And just pedal out the legs. Coming to down dog if you're not already. And you can stay in puppy. Variation one. That feels better to you. If you're in down dog, take the legs as wide as the mat. Micro bend the knees. Press the torso towards the thighs. Same thing we did when we were in the puppy pose. Just let the sitting bones tilt up towards the ceiling. Let all the pelvic muscles relax. And then exhale, maybe straighten the legs a little bit more. Squeeze the pelvic floor up and in. It's like you're trying to, it's like you when you want to, when you don't want to urinate, right? Squeeze, 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 squeeze. And then exhale, re-bend the knees, let the sitting bones roll up. So very subtle movement here. On the exhale, you maybe rock forward, straighten the legs a little bit. Squeeze the inner thighs energetically. Squeeze the pelvic floor, low abs engage. And as you breathe in, bend the knees, send the sitting bones high to the ceiling. And you can always stay with a variation one of this exercise. Do three more. Straightening the legs, squeezing, 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 squeezing. And then letting it go. And while we never want to tense the face in yoga, if you're, if you're totally new to this, I find sometimes squeezing the eyes shut or engaging the face a little helps you find those pelvic floor muscles if they're unfamiliar to you when you squeeze up and in. Good. So you're just alternating between rocking forward slightly, engaging that pelvic floor, squeezing, and then bending the knees, letting the sitting bones roll upwards to release. Last two. Good. 
good. And then when you're ready, bring the knees to the mat. Come to sit and we're going to use now the block or the books that you got before. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna simply stand on your block or on your stack of books. And it's nice to be close to a wall. And you'll see I disappear here, So, but it's nice to like use your hand on the wall for balance. But what's really important is just that you see my feet. So we're gonna step up on the block and you can do this with stairs in your house as well. This is a great way to strengthen the pelvic floor gently during pregnancy. And just lift the opposite leg off. And right away, if you just let everything collapse, you'll feel that the pelvic floor isn't working. Now stand on that leg that's on the block. Maybe flex the bottom foot and try to square your hips. So have the hands on the hips and you want the hips to be even, right? Not like tilted up, tilted this way, right? So notice when you take your weight onto the block, if the hip of the leg that's not on the block is lower. And if it is, engage the pelvic floor to bring the headlights, the hips like headlights in line with one another. Now, if you're thinking this feels too easy, I'm not doing anything, probably your hips aren't truly level. So again, take your hands to your hip points, right? Take your hands to those hip points and feel if one is higher than the other, and then even it out. And what you'll find is that you're engaging the pelvic floor lightly to hold the feet in the same plane. You can also look down at your feet and it should be such that the foot that's not on the block or books could easily meld and be with the foot that's on the block or books. They're at the same level. Keep squeezing the inner thighs together. It's also a little bit of a balance, which is good. We're gonna stay here for another 30, 40 seconds or so. So hopefully with the work we've done so far, you really feel these pelvic floor muscles supporting and holding you here. So the feet are in one line, the hips are in one line, inner thighs energetically squeezing together. Last 20 seconds. Good. Now keep everything as is, don't move. Keep squeezing the pelvic floor, keeping the hips and legs level. And I just want you to take the leg that's not on the blocker books forward and back and forward and back and forward and back. And then once in a circle, and reverse the circle. Good, and then step off. <laughs> Shake out the legs if you need to and switch it on over to the other side. So again, while this one is subtle, it is profound. So balancing second side, remember you can always be near a wall. And then hands on hips, make sure that those hips are in line with one another. And if you look down at your feet, they'd also be in line on the same plane with one another. And squeeze the pelvic floor up and in, draw the inner thighs together. And it's tiring, harder than it looks. Stay here. Lengthen the tailbone down, draw the abs up and in. Deep in the breath. Good. 
It's normal for the IT band of the standing leg to get a little sensation too, because it's definitely working extra. The more you pull and hug up and in through the pelvic floor, the less that IT band's gonna have to work. Last 10 seconds. Good, and then just take the leg forward and back. And forward and back. Two more forward and back, keeping everything level, hips level and stable. And back. And then step off that block or stack of big books. Shake it out, <laughs> come to sit down, bring the soles of the feet to touch in a butterfly shape, and this will feel nice. Just allow yourself to fold forward. You can also just rock from side to side, just releasing the IT band and the hips. You can even give your hips a little punch and just loosen that. If it feels better to do the legs one at a time, and take the heel in, just sort of letting go of any tension that accumulated during that exercise in the outer leg. Nice, and then just come to a cross-legged seat, very simple to close. Well, actually simple yet profound. I want you to take your hands around the hips, give those hips a little bit of a massage. So grab your uh, booty and give some squeezes. Good, and then take the thumbs in, hands fan out around the seat, and just feel your hips relax back into your hands. So you can kind of scooch if you need to or jiggle. Just hips relaxed, everything relaxed. This is our last exercise. And then close the eyes, keeping the hips relaxed and you should be able to sense that they're relaxed because your fingers are, are holding them, right? So if you clenched your seat, hopefully your hands would, would feel that. Keep the seat relaxed, just now engage the pelvic floor in isolation by itself. So it should feel like you're slurping up the ground through a straw, belly and low abs pull in, and then exhale, let that go. So we'll do this one on an inhale. So inhale, slurp, 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 slurp. Exhale, relax. Good, inhale. Try to keep the glutes and the seat relaxed as you just engage the pelvic floor. Exhale, relax. So it should look like you're not doing anything if someone was walking by, but you are. The reality is you are. Slurp up. So it's like you feel those vaginal muscles pull up and in, low abs engage, but glutes stay relaxed. Exhale, let that go. Let's do three more. Inhaling, pulling the pelvic floor and the groin up and in. Really squeeze at the top, but keep the glutes relaxed best you can. Exhaling. Two more. Last one. Exhale all the way. Good. From here, you can lie down and rest or follow this up with one of my other prenatal classes. I hope that this 
sequence got you more aware of your pelvic floor area, where it is. We tried lots of different techniques to access this area, including contracting and expanding the pelvic floor on both the inhale and the exhale, and in tons of different positions, because I know for each of us as individual women, you're gonna have an aha moment where you really feel and sense this area in one of these variations <laughs> one day. So if you don't feel it yet, don't worry. And if you're there, come back to this class now that you felt it and really, really engage those muscles because they are going to make labor easier, postpartum a breeze. You wanna be able to find and access this space. I'm wishing you a super beautiful, healthy pregnancy. And let me know in the comments down below how this went for you. Did you have one of those aha moments in one of these positions and breath variations? Or are you still confused about pelvic floor and exactly where it is? I would love to hear from you and connect with you in the comments down below. Thank you so much for showing up and sharing your practice with me. From my heart to yours, namaste.